So yesterday we talked about the the top mount, the air circulation, a little bit of its operation and everything, and how to look at a refrigerator, you know. Um, again, this is all about, like, one of the guys asked me, um, how do you know if it's a sealed system problem? You know, like, in order to troubleshoot that, you need to know how the refrigerator works. Now, this one here was very basic, very simple. We took out the, uh, the controls in here. I showed you guys the thermostat here. Uh, one thing I didn't talk about yesterday on the thermostat um, was this white trail right here. And I'm going to pull it out now. It runs all the way around. And if I pull out this foam baffle, it actually, if you can see, it runs through here. Mm -hmm and it comes out this other side. A um, couple of important things about this thermostat this baffle here. I'm gonna go ahead and pull it out. This is part of that thermostat. Let me take the wires off so you guys can see it and I'll walk around and show you. Just unplug all the wires. Um, so if you look at the thermostat, you can see how that it, the that tube runs out of the back of this thermostat here. Can you guys see that? Mm -hmm. So there's, depending on the type of thermostat, it's either a fluid, like like an oil, or they have gas inside of them. And this senses the temperature of the refrigerator, but when it gets hot or cold, the gas moves. Usually when heated, the gas expands and pushes on a diaphragm in here, which is just a, a, a rubber disc, and that cycles a switch here, open or closed. Now, when you change a thermostat, a lot of times it doesn't come with this white covering. It comes like this with this metal piece. And you got to be very careful not to kink it because if you kink it, the fluid or gas won't flow back and forth and the thermostat won't work. So what do you think this covering's for? Insulation? Just so they don't, uh, insulation for what? Stop it from kinking? Not from kinking. From heat. Not from heat. From freezing up. Not from freezing up. It's actually to limit something called short cycling. Because this is right where the damper is, where the cold air from the freezer is coming into the fridge, if it didn't have that coating on it, it could cause the thermostat to shut off from the air coming in and not the entire cabinet temperature. So when you're changing the thermostat, you gotta take that white coating off and put it on the new one. And the other thing is, is that if this touched up against any electrical wires, this is bare metal, it causes an electrical short. So this also acts as a protector for electrical. Um, that's not the main purpose of it, but it is there to prevent short cycling of the, of the unit. So I saw the video that I posted yesterday and I said there's one or two things I wanted to talk about before I go into the next fridge. Now we pulled off this back panel yesterday. Oh, I got it over here, one second. And I was talking about the two openings here, one where the air is supplying and the return air from the fridge back into the freezer. So when we had this damper cover over top, like this, this channel was our supply. The return is coming behind the panel. And it has like a little gasket here to reduce that. Frigidaire had a little bit of a problem um, with some of these that the, the airflow, I'm going to go on this table right here. So the damper was sitting right here where the, where, the, where the two flows were. Now this piece sits right over top of it like that. Okay. And I'll, I'll turn it around and show you the other side too. So this sits right over that that styrofoam damper that I took out 
and this channel forces the air to come out the front while this panel has a way for the air to come over the back. So this panel is what's separating the supply and the return. We were talking about that yesterday, but I didn't point that out in the video, so I wanted to point that out. Any questions on that? No? Okay, so let's talk about the bottom mount refrigerator. Now, yesterday we said the bottom mount refrigerator was basically like the top mount, but upside down. Where the freezer's on the bottom, and the coils for the evaporator are down here. It does the same thing, but the fan is right here, and the fan circulates, oops, circulates the air around the evaporator in the freezer, just like the top mount did. And that's how we cool the freezer. Then when we want to cool the refrigerator section, there is an opening right here, and the fan will blow air up through a channel here, and I'll open it up and show you. And this has a, a damper right here, and we'll point it out, and the air comes out here and circulates around the box. Now the return air is not like this one where the supply and the return in the same place. The return air, and let me draw it a little bit better here. This is the box like this, so you can see like a three-dimensional drawing of it. The return air, and I'll do it in a different color, is here and here on both sides of the supply area, but on the outside. And the return air comes down in here and goes into the freezer section here. So they were constantly circulating that air from the top to the bottom. So the evaporator, it's a little hard for you guys to see. The evaporator is down in there. We'll, we'll take a look a closer look at that in a minute. And the fan's down there. The one thing about this unit is on the track, on the left-hand side of this particular unit right here, there is a little door switch. And if you wanted to check the fans working like we did on this one, you have to make sure you hit that switch. So I'll point that out to you. So let's take a look at the air circulation in here and the damper. Now I'll get to this cup here in a minute. I had this inside from yesterday. So our damper is located in here behind this panel. And the air is forced up into the refrigerator and comes out these little vents here. And there's two holes here on the outer sides that the return air comes down. So it blows the air up into the refrigerator and it comes back down into those two sides. So let's go ahead and open this up and take a look uh, at the damper assembly. So our damper is right behind this piece of styrofoam right here. And we're going to go ahead and see if I can uh, pull it out. Get a screwdriver. Now this is just a styrofoam cover to allow you access and right here is the plug and this is the damper it's a little door I forgot what the actual test was but you can go into diagnostics on this particular unit by pressing certain buttons and you can energize that damper and watch it open and close so if we had a cooling problem remember yesterday we talked about the different types of cooling problems let's just say the freezer was cooling but the fridge was not. One of the first things we want to look at is what? What would be the first thing? If I told you my freezer's cooling, it's making ice in the freezer, all the meat and ice cream is hard and frozen, what would you want to look for first? Airflow and seals. Airflow. And what causes airflow down here? The damper. 
the fan motor. Okay? So we want to open up the door here. And Carl, if you can bring the camera so you can see what's what's inside. I might have to take it right off the tripod. Uh, and then I'm going to point it out, but I'll let you guys see it in a minute. That um, over here on the left-hand side, there's a switch. If you guys want to stand up and come look closer, you can come over here and look. There's a switch located here uh, on the left-hand side that is activated by the door opening and closing. So if I wanted to know if the fan motor on the evaporator was working, you hear the fan coming on? If I let it go, the fan shuts off. I'll do it one more time. So if you wanted, like the top mount didn't shut the fan off when I opened the door. So if you wanted to check to see if the fan's working, you open this door, you say, oh, my fan's not working, that's my problem. Make sure that this door switch is not the problem. Okay? So here the damper, you guys can see the damper door right here. This damper will open and close, and this controls the airflow up into the refrigerator compartment. So we got two more screws. I'm going to go ahead and take it out. It just snaps in there. And we have a quick disconnect here to release it. So here we got an opening where the cold air is blowing. You can actually put your hand here and feel the air blowing. And then those two big openings on the left and the right hand side is the return air. Get out. Okay. Um, all right, Carl, you want to put the camera? I started working for my own company. We received a call, a COD call from a lady saying the refrigerator wasn't cooling. It was well, that's a little error. I'll tell you what that error is in a minute. Um, so we got a problem for a bottom mount unit, unit not cooling. I called the customer and said, listen, I'll be there around one or two o'clock today. She said, okay, fine. I get in my truck. I drive to the house about one o'clock. Customer told me, oh, they were already here. They already fixed it. I said, who's they? I'm the one who called you. She says, oh, I, I thought the people that came were, was you, the one that called me. She says, I'm sorry, it's already fixed. She says, oh, but can I get your card? So I gave her my card and everything. And her problem was the top of her fridge wasn't cooling. So she calls me back and she says, hey, this is about a day or two later. She says, um, can you come out and look at my fridge? I'm like, why? She says, now everything in my refrigerator is freezing. All her milk and her water was solid ice. I asked the customer, well, what did they do? She says, I don't know, he did something in the freezer. So I made the conclusion he changed the fan motor. So what do you think happened from the fan motor not working and not cooling up here to now changing the fan motor? Everything is freezing now. What do you think happened? Any idea? Damp damper is stuck open? Damper could be stuck open. Could be the wrong fan motor. And what, what would the wrong fan motor do? It would over chill it. It would make it way colder than necessary depending on what type of refrigerator you use. You're right and not correct. Okay. Uh, you're right, it was the wrong fan motor. Fan motors can go one of two ways. They can go clockwise mm -hmm. or they can go counterclockwise. Mm -hmm. Oh, got you. Well, the guy put the wrong fan motor in, and instead of the air coming in from the center where the damper was, it was coming in from those two sides. Mm. Oh. The damper was trying to close, mm. but the air was being supplied through the other openings that had no damper, and it was freezing everything. I had to order the right fan motor, and she ended up paying me to fix it. So it took me a few minutes to figure out a fan motor change. Well, why would the fan motor cause freezing? And then when I put my hands here, 
I didn't feel any air, but I felt air on the two outside holes, and then I realized, hey, someone reversed the airflow. And you can't do it by flipping the blade. You actually have to have the motor go the opposite way. So um, that was the problem. And you guys know when I pulled the damper out, I got a beep or a warning, right? Well, did you look at the display? Do you notice anything on the display that changed? OP. OP. Yeah, what do you think that means? That's open. Mm -hmm. But what it's notice is open is not the damper, but there's a thermistor inside of here. Let's see if we can open this up. Right here. What does a thermistor do? PT sensitive temperature coefficient. And then uh, I'll just splice the two videos together. So PTC and NTC, positive temperature coefficients is when it gets warmer, the resistance goes up with the temperature. When it gets colder, the resistance drops. If it's NTC, when it gets warmer, the resistance goes down. When it gets colder, the resistance goes up. They're opposite each other. Usually refrigeration, most of them are NTC thermistors. But as soon as I unplug this plug, I unplug two different things. One is the damper assembly here, and I'll pull it out so you guys can see it. I, I unplug the damper, but I also disconnected the thermistor. And as soon as I disconnected the thermistor, this display said OP. And notified me that there's something wrong and there's something open. So that I can go through diagnostics in here, check each thermistor individually, and it'll tell me pass or fail or open or shorted. If it was shorted, that means it reads zero ohms. Instead of a resistance value, it would say SH. If it's open, it says OP. If it's good, it's usually like a number one that it tests good. This is on the Frigidaire and Electrolux units. So on the damper, that's located here in the front, I can pull it out. And remember the damper on the other refrigerator, This is a manual damper. Remember we said yesterday it goes up and down and controls the airflow into the refrigerator. This is a motorized damper, it has a motor in here. And based on that thermistor right there and the other thermistors in the unit, this motor will open and close this door depending on temperature. That'll increase the accuracy of the temperatures of the two units. So in the other one, if the refrigerator temperature was reached, but the freezer temperature was not reached, it's going to shut off on that thermostat. We said in the diagram that if that thermostat opened, all the fans and compressors shut off. That's on this mechanical one. But on, on a computerized one, we can control each temperature of the two sides of the box independently. And if the refrigerator temperature is reached, we could close this damper off, just closing this little window off and restricting the airflow through it so that the refrigerator will get any colder, but we can still run the freezer and cool the freezer down. Once both of them are satisfied, the control board's gonna see the thermistor down here and the thermistor up here and it's gonna tell the unit to shut down. Okay, so with this computerized one and all these different temperature sensors and stuff, we can be more accurate to the temperatures we're trying to reach in the unit. So if we're having problems with the temperature not right, like this one saying the temperature in the freezer is 72 degrees, that's not good, is it? All right, well, we don't know the temperature in the refrigerator, do we? 32. Carl, unplug that can't, the phone for a second. I want you to come over here. So if you guys want to come over here, I'll show it to you. So I closed the damper completely on this, right? Well, right now the box is saying the, the, the thermistors are both saying this is warm. I just plugged the refrigerator in. So when I plug this in, the damper should try to open up because it's looking for cooling in the fridge. Let me get on this side, excuse me one second. And you guys should see that one try to open now. I can 
plug it in, the wires are so short. Okay, let's try it right now. See that? The door just opened right up. Open wide open. Did you see that? I'll unplug it and do it one more time. I'm going to close it up. And I'm going to, can you see the damper there, Carl? Yes. So I'm going to go ahead and get this plug ready and I'll hold it up this time. See it opening? Mm -hmm. Now it opened up a little bit, not all the way. All depending on, on the demand for cooling. Okay, so that's how a motorized one, the control board will send low voltage to this, probably about 12 volts. And there's probably a little sensor in here telling the board the position of the damper. So it's got something in there telling it where the position of the damper is while the other wires are controlling the motor going backwards and forwards. Okay? So that's the airflow in the unit. Now that it says 72 and high, it just means the temperature's too warm in there and it's not normal. Um, we notice we got a little light on here, alert, reset, and the high temperature light's on. I can't reset the high temperature light, but if it was beeping or something, I can reset it. But notice how it doesn't say OP no more. Now, the OP was located in the window on the right. What section is that? Can anybody read what that says? Refresh food. Refrigerator. Refresh food side. This is the freezer. Mm -hmm. So what if the OP said OP here? That means the, the freezer damper is... Not damper. The other part. What was that I just talked about? Starts with a T. Thermistor. Thermistor. So if it said OP on the freezer side, the thermistor in the freezer is my problem. If it said OP on the refrigerator side, it's a thermistor in my refrigerator. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and Imran, can you uh, open that up for me? And it rests on top of here, so when you're trying to reinstall it, you can set it on here and then line up them screw holes on there. In the little hook that right there, like a little. Groove. There's, there's like a groove right here. Yeah, I see it. Yeah. Okay, so we don't need to take these tracks out, but we can. Emma, I want to take that back cover off the uh, evaporator. That's the quarter. Uh, Phillips. Take off the evaporator cover. What are we going to look at back there? The fan. The fan. And the coil. And what? And the coil. What are we going to look at on the coil? We talked a little bit about it yesterday. Show no frost on it? Well, we want some frost. But we don't want it. A very thin layer, just like a film, right around the edge of the pipe. We don't want it too thick. If it's too thick, we're having a defrosting problem. But this refrigerator's been unplugged, and we just plugged it in right now. So if we had a cooling problem, and I want to talk about this because someone brought it up in, in my first video, and I had this ready for you. When you're checking temperature, a lot of guys like to use those laser thermometers. They're okay, but they don't necessarily sense the temperature of the air inside the refrigerator. They're sensing the temperature of the panel or wall that the laser beam is pointing to. And when you open up a door like this, if we, I want to check the temperature in this box, and I take this little pocket thermometer and I stick it inside, remember we said yes, it would open the door, the, the, warm, the cold air is going to rush out, the warm air is going to run in, so that it's not going to sense the temperature properly. So one of the ways to check temperature accurately is the refrigerator section. And we're going to go ahead and we take our thermometer. And, and if you notice, this little pocket thermometer has this little tiny loop right there. So when you take this, like, like this, take the thermometer part, stick it in there so we can hold it in the water without holding it on our hands. That way our, our, our hands aren't affecting the temperature of it. Okay? So you take and you stick it in water, and it should be the water from the refrigerator. Now, don't use the dispenser water, even though the dispenser water is usually cold, that it runs down and around through the outside of the refrigerator, and part of that line is not refrigerated. So you're not gonna get the actual temperature inside the refrigerator. Now, if you ran like two cups, 
Maybe the third cup is all water from the fridge. And there's a line in here that, con that controls our water. That is the water for the secondary ice maker, but there's a compartment in the fridge that actually what chills our water. So if you want an accurate water temperature, an accurate refrigerator temperature, this is where you're going to get the temperature. You're going to get the water from the fridge and measure the temperature of the fridge. So if the customer has a bottle of water there, say, do you mind if I use that bottle of water? And then you stick your thermometer in the water and you check the temperature of the water, you know what the temperature of the fridge is. Because like I said, when you open the door, you lose temperature. The only other thing you could do is you can use like a, a digital meter that has the wire sensor. Stick the meter on top, stick the wire inside, keep the door closed. You're gonna wait five or 10 minutes till that box gets back to temperature again to see if it's working right. So if the airflow seems to be working on the evaporator, we wanna to go to the back and check the compressor. But now that I have this open, let's do the front part here. So you can see down here is our evaporator coil. What do you notice different about this evaporator coil that I pointed out in the other evaporator coil? What don't you see here? I pointed out and said, this is very important. The styrofoam diffusers. Either this had them and then people worked on them and never put it back, or this unit didn't come with it. Usually a styrofoam diffuser would go on the side here so that when a fan's pulling air, it's not pulling air from the outside of the evaporator, it's pulling air across the coils. I don't know if this one had side diffusers on there, but it's important that if it has them that they're installed properly so you have proper airflow over that unit. So we have the evaporator here and we want to see a frost pattern. And there's two lines there. I can take this fan motor out for a second. Well, before I take it out, let me plug the refrigerator in. So, notice that the fan's not running unless I hit the switch. Mm -hmm. Okay, so again, if you want to know if this fan's working, you got to make sure that the light switch is being activated. Now, be very careful. You could go to a unit, open up the door, and you say, oh, the reason why the fan's not working is because the light switch. And you go like this, and you hit the switch, and the fan starts working. But when you leave, the customer says it's still not cooling. And then you go up here, when the unit's all back together, and you check by the damper, and you don't feel the air going, which the fan's not running. But when you open it up, you hit the switch, the fan is running. What might be happening? Mm. Damper blow? Not damper. Connector. Done. What if oh, ice blow the, 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 the drawer is not hitting the switch properly? Yeah. Mm -hmm. the ice, yeah. You can press it with your yeah. finger, but the drawer might not be aligned right or something. Mm -hmm. And when the drawer is closed, it's not pushing down on the switch all the way. So you want to make sure that not just that when you hit it that the fan runs, but when the door closes, the fan runs. I had one side-by-side -side refrigerator. This is 1990. The guy was working on a refrigerator. He did a repair on it, came back the next day. Refrigerator section was warm, but we had ice. It was making ice like no tomorrow. That means we were good temperatures because most of these ice makers cycle around 18 degrees. Water freezes at 32. So if an ice maker is dumping ice, we know we're hitting decent temperatures in the freezer, at least, at least 18 to 15 to 18 degrees Fahrenheit, okay? But the refrigerator side wasn't cooling. I checked the damper, the damper was good, the fan was running. It was a side-by-side -side refrigerator. And if, if you look at these two refrigerators, you see this door is higher than this door? Mm -hmm. On the side-by-side, -side, the doors went all the way down. If the cabinet is not level to the ground, look at how this door went lower when I pushed on this side. Now if I go over here and I push on this side, watch what happens. 
the doors shift. So when a cabinet is not sitting perfectly level on the ground, your doors flex. The whole cabinet flexes and the doors go with them. Well, this is what happened. The door switch was here in that unit and it flexed so much that the door closed, never hit the switch. And that switch didn't stop the fan, but what's the other thing that this switch does? What you see it right here. What do you see when I hit that switch? Turn the fan off. Not, not just the fan, it turns the light off. So what happened was it wasn't hitting the switch. The light was staying on with the door closed. And the light, Making it on the heat from the that light. That light is so, have you ever tried to unscrew a yeah. light bulb that's been on? Mm -hmm. Believe it or not, light bulb can put a lot of heat. Refrigerator might not be able to overcome the amount of heat that the light bulb is producing, especially if they got a 40 watt bulb or 60 watt bulb in there. Okay, so it was just the fact that the doors and the cabinet were not level to the ground and it wasn't hitting the switch and was causing a problem. So like I said, just because you press the switch and you see it's functioning, doesn't mean that the switch is good or bad. The contacts are good, but you need to make sure the door is hitting it properly as well. Okay, so those two are the lines that are bringing Freon in. I can actually see this one and it looked white, but there's no frost building up on my, my capillary tube or the, the line coming into my evaporator. Compressor should be running right now, right? So. No pressures. I don't think this has an inverter board on it. That's a board. I think the inverter board's mm -hmm. not on this unit. I think we took it off a while ago, right? It was a wrong. Yeah. So, yeah, here's the plug for it. It's not, the compressor's not plugged in. But the fan motor's running. So just like the other refrigerator, we want to go to the back of the unit. We want to check this line right here. What is this line? This chart. This black one. This is what? Oh, that's capillary the from the condenser. This is the discharge. It's the discharge line. This is the high pressure line coming off the compressor to the condenser. I want to feel these are warm. I want to feel that this line is warm. What temperature do we say it was? 30, 40. About, 110, to be warm, about 110 degrees. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Remember we like the temperature yeah. pressure chart and 125 yeah, PSI was 110 degrees? Yeah. Okay, so we check this out, make sure that it's hot. This is what? This line. Suction. You see these marks on there? What do you think these marks are for? That's where you bend it. The, someone followed my video on how to how to do the bending of the pipes and bent this pipe in here. So again, this valve would not be here from the factory. Someone was working on it. What we need to do is we need to troubleshoot this out. I can see this plug is not in the greatest shape. Someone hit it with a torch and melted the terminals on that. So again, just like the other refrigerator, I want to check the compressor and the fans. Even though it's electronically controlled. The two fans and the compressor all run at the same time. Okay, just like the mechanical one. The, the procedure for troubleshooting is the same. Airflow, the, the tubing, now we got temperatures and everything. Now, if I went there and I saw that the, my tubing was room temperature, is my compressor running? In this case, it's not, but that one, the compressor was running and we didn't have the right temperatures. So tomorrow what we're going to do is we're going to hook up gauges to this one. We're going to talk about the gauges, how to use them, and we're going to connect them to this refrigerator. We're going to check pressures, and I'm going to say, okay, now what do we do? This is what we have, and this is how we approach it, and this is how we fix it. In the meantime, I'll get an inverter board for this one so we can also check this one out and see if this one's working properly. So this is all I'm going to cover for today. Anybody got any questions about this one and anything that we saw today? Um, yes, sir. Like all, like every refrigerator, like some of them have the therm thermostat inside the coil. Not necessarily inside the coil, but yeah, they'll be attached got, to the coil. Yeah. We got a thermostat on this freezer coil, an actual thermostat. That's a defrost thermostat up here in the upper right hand corner, yeah. but that's not the thermistor. We have a thermistor here too. 
enough of? Um, I don't know where the thermistor is on this one. I have to look. But we have a freezer thermistor inside this unit as well. It's not, it's not there. I'll have to figure out where it is. It might be in the wall here on either one of these sides. We'll check it out. But there will be a sensor to sense the temperature in the freezer as well as the refrigerator. Because like side by side refrigerators without the, the bottom, they have like the coil be like this big. Yeah, they're just turned the other yeah. way. You oh, take that coil yeah. and turn it the other way because it won't fit in a side by side oh. unit. Okay. So it's the same coil. Same size, because yeah. all these refrigerators are roughly the same size, 23 cubic foot, 28 cubic yeah. foot, somewhere around there. The coils might be a little bit larger or smaller, mm -hmm. but the airflow, the temperature, we want to look for a frost pattern. We have no frost patterns on either one of these. We didn't see a frost pattern on this one when plugged it in yesterday. Mm -hmm. We didn't see one on that one. Tomorrow we're going to go in deeper now. We're going to look at actual the sealed system. How do, how do we check it? What are we looking for? What are our readings? And what do we do next after those readings? Okay? Anything else? Okay, so then we're gonna stop here today.